bad boy for anyone. In life, you need that one song, you know, that uh, wakes you up. I think transformation, you can't sidestep. It's not meant for modesty schools. The game is meant for everyone. When you play the game of, of rugby, you have to have a heart. You have to have the passion for the game. Welcome to another inspiring episode of Visionaries Lounge. My guest this evening is someone who is larger than life, quite literally and figuratively, because he is a big guy, but he's also gone on to do great things in the world of rugby. If I had an audience, I'd ask them to sing Shosho Loza and help me to welcome Tando Manana. Molo Kudwam Jani. Sayanda Manbuli, Sendia Pila Wunzano. Sendia Pila Kodo. You were born and raised in Port Elizabeth, in Downey? New Brighton. It's a township. I call it the Mecca of PE. Uh, like the Mac, like Soweto is the Mac of Johannesburg. I think a lot of uh, role models coming out of, of that location and that uh, suburb, and I'm quite happy to be part of that. What was your childhood like? Well, I grew up uh, at a single parent, but also in the process had a, a grandmother that was very spiritual and uh, for me, uh, you know, very inspiring. Only child? Yes, certainly. I always uh, sort of, uh, you know, whenever I speak to my mom and we have a sort of uh, an argument, I said, you must remember I'm the only thing that came out of that stomach alive. <laughs> that is so mean. Yeah. But talk to me about that journey. I mean, I, I look at you today, quite a, a formidable man. You look very principled. What was it like not to have a dad around full time? Look, um, firstly, I think uh, through the years as I went into adulthood, uh, you know, there was a sort of connection uh, as a cause of a person uh, my father was not there I think even through my initiation from boyhood to manhood he was not there he's supposed to be there uh, you know in part of our customs but uh, I mean cousins were there to make sure that I go through that ritual properly but I mean uh, the relationship now uh, I talk to him and uh, we converse in a lot of things and uh, I'm sure deep down inside he's aware that he was never there you know for my upbringing but that's uh, water under the bridge and we continue forward so I mean it was never easy and it's never easy but uh, the good thing that I'm having about is you are able then again to connect as both men. Did you have any father figures at least uh, during your upbringing other than your cousins that you mentioned? I grew up so fast in, in a sense that uh, people always, even if I was a boy because of the stature that I had, the length and tall, people would thought that I'm already a man. So uh, my friends were never the age group of mine. There were always uh, older guys that I looked up to, thankfully to the sport, because in sport uh, I was able to play, you know, uh, for a club called Spring Rose, uh, which had a lot of guys that I looked up to, you know, the Gerald Majola who went on to become the CEO. And, uh, you know, I think for me, I took one man uh, as my role model, and that's the guy who adopted me whilst I was in high school, uh, Mr. Melvin, uh, he passed away, and may his soul rest in peace, where I looked up, he brought up, uh, you know, two guys, two men, and uh, I was part of the, the of that family, so I became the third man in the family, um, a single a single man looking after three boys. Did he introduce you to rugby, or how did that come about? <sighs> that that's a strange thing. I think at school where I went in St. Thomas uh, in in Galvandale in Port Elizabeth, uh, I was very um, into drama and into cricket. But cricket was not for me because I, I would waste the whole day and I would, I would not be happy because I would score minimum runs. So I, it was not bringing fun. So I tuned and went into drama school and I did exceptionally well from standard seven to standard nine. And I got a scholarship uh, to do drama in Grahamstown. Our school was not a rugby school. Uh, it was a school that uh, was a cricket school, drama, soccer. So there was a team visiting. I was asked to just put in the numbers and fill in the gaps and I did that. Guess what, I scored four tries, and um, as they say, the rest is history. So I took love, you know, at, 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 at first go, and I was like a duck in water for the first time. And then you let go of the drama. The funny thing is, going into Standard 10, I decided I don't, I don't love drama anymore. You know, I just divorced it. Uh, no hard feelings, but I was more interested in, in the sport because my first year uh, took off exceptionally well, whereby I, was, uh, I went to as far as the under-17 of the EP team. So my aim was there was an under 19 and I'm doing my trick and uh, it's uh, you know it's it's what I call the pinnacle of schoolboy rugby and that's Craven Week. Yeah, we've got a coaching year at Adcock Stadium uh, organized by the Eastern Province and Sarfo. Nick Mallet uh, is here and Jake uh, White 
to try and check our most talented players, preparing them for the next World Cup. And also in that period, we had a 1995, uh, it was a Rugby World Cup happening. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. the first time also I got introduced. So the spirit of that World Cup also sort of pushed me from the back to also, uh, you know, move on as quickly as possible. Was it around that time that your, your, your adopted father passed away? No, 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 no. He passed away. Actually, I was in Ireland when he passed on. And that was 2002, if I'm not mistaken, thereabouts. So uh, I came down to give my last respects, uh, you know, to a man that, uh, you know, I stayed under his roof for five years. One thing about the guy is uh, he just loved me as his own kids. That is so inspiring. Let's talk now about that discussion you have with your mom and your grandma. Because yeah. I've, I've got boys. Yeah. And I think if they came to me and told me they want to pursue a career in rugby, yeah. I would find all the reasons why yeah. they should not and try my level best to dissuade them from that only because it's such an aggressive sport what was that conversation like going to mom go go i want to play rugby i think at high school it didn't really matter it mattered most when i was at p technical uh, in pe where i was already now up in the ranks uh, that i'd played throughout and an offer came from Grecos, and they invited me over for trials and i went through but then the decision when they offered me the contract was i had to say to them I'm going to Kimball, and I mean, I'd been to Kimberley just for a weekend, so I never knew about the place. But a year later, I'd proven them wrong, and they embraced me for the, the tough stance I took and the decision, because I'd become a fully-fledged springbok within a year of, of, of leaving home. And, uh, you know, there they were over the drum magazines, now part of, uh, part of myself of and part course, of me and, and part of history. Of course, they're seeing their son on television yeah, so representing the country. It's a good story, you wow. know, for them, you know, so... I think um, from there, you know, uh, they let me do whatever I planned because they had full trust in me that I could actually, you know, uh, succeed in life. Love it. Now, you have to teach me again the position that you were playing. Yes. So it's a tight back. No, it's a loose forward. It's a loose forward. Yes. You know, I said tight back, back because, because I think I thought that's the opposite and that's how I learned. It's a loose forward. forward yeah. But that's your position. Flank forward. Flank forward. Yeah. There's a lot okay. of position. There's yes. a blind side flank, there's an open side flank, and then if you want to put them in one group, you call them loose forwards, which is six, seven, and eight. Okay, you're gonna need to draw me a picture. I'll have to, I'll have <laughs> and to. And we'll do that uh, in yeah. uh, just a moment. So while he draws a picture for me and explains it slowly so that I understand, we'll continue this uh, discussion a little bit later. Tando Manana telling us a little bit more about how he rose to fame and what he's up to now. Visionaries Lounge. It's such a pleasure to have you with us. Rugby icon uh, Tando Manana is with us in studio this evening and he spoke to us about how he was pursuing drama before rugby came and bit him. But let's also talk a bit about your love for music before I go back to rugby <laughs> because you were trying to educate me when I told you that I love Jodeci yes. and you were saying that I know nothing about music because you have the all-time favorite band which is Taverez. Taverez. You are the world. Nobody in the words studio knows it. Words and music. It. Words and music. You are the one. You are the one. You, are the you listen to that song? Every morning. Every morning. Yes. Why? You know, for me, music is part of uh, my life. Uh, but uh, in life, you need that one song, you know, that uh, wakes you up. When I sleep, put my flops underneath the bed so that in the morning, I go down and kneel to try and find them so that I'm able to put a prayer before I go out. And from there, I would play the music. Uh, you know, that is, for me, uh, been part of my life for years. So when you were on that rugby field and, you know, at the height of your career when it comes to that, because now you're more on the analytical side of rugby, but when you were on the field, did it carry you through all those tremendous highs and sometimes deep lows? Look, I think uh, in my life, I mean, as I said, I started, uh, you know, late in high school, the game. But uh, for me, I, I took very quickly uh, to, to adapt to, you know, the, the touch. And I always uh, say one thing, that when you play the game of, of rugby, you have to have a heart. 
you have to have the passion for the game. I tell you a story. When I was still under 21, I was invited to an SA under 21 trial. Uh, it came to Johannesburg, and uh, there was a lot of uh, you know talented youngsters across the country that uh, were selected, and I managed to make the last 36. But unfortunately, they had to select 27 from the 36, of which uh, I didn't make it. But I still reminded myself that I've got to remain positive because that's my life, that's who I am. And uh, it just took me another year to make the junior Springbok team, which was the SA under 23, which subsequently uh, I followed that achievement with a full national call-up to the Springbok team. So, I mean, had I given up, uh, it would, didn't have mean that uh, I'm a sportsman. I think as a sportsman, you've got to be competitive. But also, I appreciated that I was given yet another chance to showcase my talent to the same people and the same selectors uh, to prove them wrong. That's all you have to do, always prove your critics wrong. So that disappointment made you even more resilient and even more determined to Even win. today, I always say to people, even if I did not achieve what I wanted, it means there's still tomorrow for me to be able to work the wrongs and turn them into the rights so that I'm able to still achieve, you know, the same goal I have in my life. Uh, you know, for me, it's, life is not about monetary value. It's about inner happiness. Uh, that's what it's all about, you know, uh, what you have in life. When you, when you die, unfortunately, you leave them behind. I played... Uh, alongside you know good players when I see Victor Medfield who was selected in the same year you know I look at the you know the John Smith those are people that I played against you know uh, you know and and so forth and so forth uh, and and for me that's good I mean uh, Peter de Villiers was my assistant coach at the Bulls super rugby team so uh, I've managed to meet and greet you know the who's who why did you quit it's a very good question When I decided to play the game, it was my decision. So when I decided to stop, I decided on one ground that I am no garden boy for anyone. At the time, I remember being left out uh, to go to Fiji, and uh, I was phoned by some of the Saru executive then not to talk to media. And you started seeing the reality when you become a professional at national level, uh, that people try and control your life. But what they do not know is that, uh, you know, they never train you or they never put you where you are. Uh, so I still had that uh, ace card that, you know, if I decide I want to stop, I will stop. There was also a time when we were in Argentina with the Springbok team where I refused to be initiated because uh, I had felt that I'd gone through, you know, an initiation uh, that still lives on in Kosa culture. And uh, I'd felt that, uh, you know, to be initiated, uh, you know, in the Springbok setup, uh, I didn't take a liking, so I stood my ground. It's a funny thing that it was news all over the country, and I was not aware of it because I was not yet into the Google or into the Internet. What uh, did that initiation entail? There's a lot of things that uh, are gruesome within. You'd understand it is maybe for team spirit, but also I think for me it was uh, degrading. Because what I came here was to be part of the Springbok team, to be part of a group of uh, rugby warriors uh, that carry the hope of the nation. For me to be subjected to that initiation, and uh, I didn't see, because we've got different cultures, you know. Um, people, uh, white players have got their own culture that they, are, they pride themselves in. Remember when you're at national level, people tend to think that uh, we, 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 we all do or follow what is being said. Sometimes you have a different opinion. They might not like it, but they see it as troublesome. And that, that was my problem, is uh, they thought I was troublesome. And I stood that ground, and uh, so it went, it went viral then on the news. So do you regret it? Not all. Not till to this day, I don't. Um, I, love the, I love the Springbok emblem uh, because it was also played by African and colored people. And also in 1992, the Unity Talks meant that, uh, you know, uh, all the races uh, need to be part and transform the sport so that, uh, you know, we become one, uh, the full unity and full unified uh, sort of country or team. And I still abided by the team's ethics, uh, but I also had my own uh, views uh, at, at times. And I'm entitled to that because I'm a human being. I'm also entitled for my own opinion. But that does not mean that uh, I relinquished my position on what I stand for. What do you make of the transformation debate currently raging? 
Sarfi decided that uh, there was a there was a need to fast track players. It's not just uh, in response to the political situation at the moment. It's something that has been bothering Safi for a long time. The fact that uh, players aren't coming through from the under 19 and under 21 ranks, and there is this loss of talent. The question that we must ask is, from the provinces of the South African Rugby Union, what happens to those players? Why are you not able to retain those players? When we speak of transformation, I always ask a person, do you embrace transformation? Do you see it as a need for transformation? I think transformation, you can't sidestep. It's not meant for modesty schools. The game is meant for everyone who wants to participate in it. Despite the talks and the unity talks by the then Rev Stofil and everyone that took part to talk with the doc Dr. Danny Craven, um, there, was, there surely was a vision. And, and the vision was simple. Every South African has the right to play and get full and equal opportunity. Is it happening? No, it's not. I think transformation, you can't sidestep. It's not meant for models to schools. The game is meant for everyone who wants to participate in it. Tando, we'll have to leave it there, at least just for now. You've heard it for yourself on a point of principle. He left quite an illustrious career in rugby. Where to now for Tando Manana? We'll find out in just a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back. Thanks again for joining us. A man of great conviction is with us in studio. He left an illustrious career in rugby in order to pursue what he thought was right and just. Tando Manana, let's continue this conversation now. Yes. I know that you have not left rugby entirely. No. You're an analyst. A couple of shows on radio. I know you're on television as well. You're quite a busy man. Tell us about what you're doing now. Look, firstly, uh, as I said earlier, uh, I love rugby and um, I love radio and uh, currently have three shows per week uh, on the English uh, sort of medium uh, station that is Radio 2000. I have a Sunday uh, Raga talk show, five to six, and also on a Wednesday on Game On. And also on Mshabwenen, uh, you know, one of uh, the biggest radio stations in the country, it's called in Mokoyom Boko. Recently also with uh, Robert Marawa on Tuesday, which uh, people also like, uh, you know, they always say I shoot from the hip. And, and I don't do that, you know. I think I'm being um, objective and, uh, and, 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 I'm, and I'm putting my opinions. Mm. I have a picture of your daughter now. She's much older than this yeah, now. She's, she's looking. Now. She's looking very cute as a baby. She's seven years old now. Utando Yes, that's Shem, correct. You thought it was going to be a guy, Tando Junior. It was TJ. It was TJ. Yes. And I she said, surprise, Daddy. It, it, was, it, was a, it, was a, it was a girl, you know. So oh. uh, we have a very good relationship. Yeah. But uh, the name still, is, they still call it Tando. So, you know, it's, there's still a bit of me not there. Bad, not, not bad, not bad. Not at all, all. not, not far, yeah. Good job. So close yet so far. So close, but so far. Yeah. Just looking at this picture and thinking about her, and I think if we juxtapose that yeah. with those rugby jerseys yeah. that we see there, in what way or how would you like her to remember you? If one looks, and, and, and there's a simple reason why I hold this pullover, is this pullover reminds me I was never afraid to fail from a young man into what I am today it is with that line that I was never afraid to fail these are the achievements that you should be proud of I'm the role model I'm a father that's uh, for me first and foremost what my father didn't do for me I learned from that mistake so that template I've managed to change it so that she can look at the positive side that uh, I was a good father, I cared for and I looked after up until the last day that we will part in this lifetime. And uh, you know, also if one were to look at this one, this is my first training jumper, as we call it. This is the tears and sweat that I wiped my face off and uh, it reminded me of where I come from. Uh, coming from a single mother, coming from a, you know, a good family, a family which had nothing, uh, but a family that uh, is proud you know, to, to call me their son. And uh, so this one I've, I've kept all along. It just reminded me that. If you talk of bulls, you know, some, some guy asked me now uh, about the lions, if it's a <laughs> lion's jersey. <laughs> this was super 12 moment for me. Um, one of the toughest in my career, where we went overseas to Australia for four weeks 
Uh, I was the only African in the team, no friends. Uh, we train together, but after training, uh, you are all by yourself. It was tough, but I never cried because I knew I took a decision. What does the future have in store for you? Where do you see yourself in the next five, ten years? I cannot predict what, uh, what lies in store for me, but um, as long as I get given the opportunity to be the voice of the voiceless, um, to be a role model to, to many young South Africans. Maybe you never know, I could be a GM or a CEO of a corporate so body in 10 years. going back to drama. No. Although I can see a shaft <laughs> in you, eh? a gamla in you. <laughs> so definitely not the drama. Look, I, you know, one of, <laughs> one of the things of, of, we spoke about music, I love to be stylish. Uh, I love clothes. I no, love I can, sports. I can way. see. In fact, some of the ladies on on floor just had yeah. to, to to regain their yeah. sanity when you walked out of the yeah. change room because you came in your tracksuit, yeah. you know, like everyone, yeah. and then you changed, and there was like a moment of silence. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, and I mean, earlier on, they could I could put a suit. I said no. You told me that there's one jersey that I think was quite a prized possession. Yeah. It was a rugby jersey, a rugby World Cup, or something to that effect, um, and you gave that one away. Yes. Three weeks back, we had the launch, uh, the Habashwe launch. We got uh, jerseys, um, uh, you know, uh, to promote with the Bok Friday. So on Monday, uh, a guy just came to me and says he would love to have a jersey. Can't I organize him one? I said, no, I've got one in the boot. So I went to the boot and I gave him the jersey. And I felt that, you know, um, this guy was, was really, truly a patriot. Tando, we'll have to leave it there, I'm afraid. One thing you didn't give us, though, yeah, well. on air yeah. is, is a sneak peek at how naughty you really are <laughs> and how humorous you really are because you gave, us a lot, you gave us lots of smiles behind yeah. the scenes and yeah. we were giggling because you were just definitely making us feel yeah. that we don't know any good music and yeah. walking around and showing us yeah. just how good a music collection that yeah. you have. But you are absolutely humorous. You are a joy to be around and we do appreciate you your much. time this evening. You know, there are a lot of people that look up to you and keep doing the good work that you do, keep inspiring the young women uh, of this country that themselves can see themselves as Ayanda Alain Payne. Uh, for future, we need uh, you know people that will walk in your footprint as well. But it's been great also being on the show. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Well, as long as we continue to have guests as inspiring as Tando Manana, we'll definitely never be short of content. So let's do it again next week, same time, same place. Good night, God bless. South African men out there who are watching, a bit of advice. We as men break the rules, but also along the way we do realize that we will lose friends as we move on to a greater path in this country. Love your family and love your kids and keep on inspiring a nation. And to those who don't, they will follow suit. Thank you for watching and good night. And the Butonga Bumandi, Kumdu Wonge Kai, and Gosi.